and good morning. Today begins the sixth night in this ninth wave of the evolution of consciousness. And the title for today is Ninth Wave, Psychology of Denial. And I wrote, Yesterday I posted a video, video entitled, Psychologists Help 9-11 Truth Deniers. And I give the website so that you can watch that yourself. And I posted that on Facebook. As we begin the sixth and final night in the ninth wave of the evolution of consciousness, I want to revisit this subject. I will tie it in with a recent channeling attributed to St. Germain by Aruna, in which it was stated, quote, Concentrate on the conspiracy theories and you will not awaken and ascend. Not that these are not accurate. Most of them are contributing credible facts to man's cabal awareness. But this is not to be the focus of those wanting to ascend. Why? Because this helps negative attitudes grow. Anything against counts as negativity, no matter what topic is being attacked. When man chooses any opinion that is against another, his mind is caught in the dream. End quote. A very good friend of mine who believes the truth about 9-11 and not the official story sent me this yesterday and feels that it is it resonates with her and she feels it is accurate and she's very much aware she's part of the pod community and part of the new way and she's very much aware of what is going on there in the dynamics since 9-11 this year with me and with the board and with everything that's going on. She's very much involved in that and very aware of that. I actually sent that uh, psychologist help 9-11 truth deniers. I posted it on my website and tagged the board members and some other key people in the, in the metaphysical community. Uh, and I embarrassed one of them, and I didn't mean to do that. It's not my intention to embarrass, but it is my intention to awaken. Anyway, in regard to the St. Germain channeled message, how do I, what makes a, a channeler or a channeled message resonate with me or not resonate with me? Over the years, that I have been reading channeled messages over the years that I have been a 9-11 truther. One of the key factors for me, this is for me, that I determine the veracity and accuracy of a channeled message is whether or not they acknowledge the negative things that are happening in our world, specifically the conspiracies of government against the people. Specifically, the conspiracies of bankers and the monetary system against the awakening of the people. If that's not acknowledged by the channeler, it, it puts the channeler, for me, in a state of disregard. I hold them up. In fact, when Cryon, I love Lee Carroll. I love Cryon and the channeled messages. I mean, I have been moved to tears countless times by those channelings but when he said don't pay attention to conspiracy theories and that there is no conspiracy immediately immediately for me my filter goes up and I say he's just stepped out of integrity because that's not my integrity that's not where I am I have I do not like the whole thing of denial. So how much denial is in me? I keep uncovering things. I keep uncovering more and more. But one thing I will not deny is that the world we live in, from my perspective, is, yes, it's an illusion,
but it's an illusion we created as our teacher to get us to grasp and to understand the nature of our own being, the hugeness of our own being, how powerful we are as creators, that we can create either what we would consider positive or negative things. This is our reality. We can do this. And separation, even though I keep saying that separation is the big lie, that's the only real illusion is that we are separate from God. That's the only real illusion because that's impossible. That's impossible. But it is possible for us to create an experience in which we seem to be separated from God in our own mind, in the ego mind that edges God out. We've done that to ourselves. We need to take responsibility for that. It's true. And we need to be able to separate the good from evil. That's part of the process. That which build, builds us and, and lifts us up and that which destroys us and tears us down. We need to be able to distinguish that. What tears us down? What tears us down is when we live in a lie. When we create something and then deny that we've created it. When we create something and deny that it exists. That is always, from my perspective, destructive. Always destructive. You can't win when you're in denial. You can't be in truth and be in denial at the same time. Now that doesn't mean that you're not aware, or that doesn't mean that you are aware of things that you're not yet aware of, and you haven't been, they haven't been brought into your realm of consciousness. But once something is brought into your realm of consciousness, you are now responsible for it. And to deny and not even look at the evidence, not even look at it because it makes you uncomfortable to step out of your comfort zone. You're not, to me, that's a key thing that you're not going to ascend. I mean, if people don't pay attention to conspiracy theories, to me, they're not going to ascend. Not if they do, if they don't. And if people aren't against the lies that we've told ourselves, if people are not against a system that demoralizes human beings and tears human beings down and deprives them of their natural birthright, deprives them of the truth about themselves, of how powerful we are as, as creators and co-creators, if that is denied, we can't ascend because we can only ascend, ascend by expanding into, not shrinking down from. The concept of, of, of not being against anything means not taking a stand. You can't stand in your power unless you understand your weakness and where your weakness comes from. That's, that's my truth. Okay, maybe, maybe not everyone can see that. But are you not seeing it because you don't want to? And if you have, an, uh, if you have a, a way of showing me that this is not correct, that I, that I can't focus on, on a problem that I've created for myself as a teacher and as a, as a human being as part of the collective that we have created for ourselves as a teacher. If, if you can show me how understanding the problem and grasping the problem, comprehending it. When I say under, I, I'm, every time I use the word understand now, I don't want to stand under a problem. I want to get an overview of the problem. I want to comprehend it. And that's what I mean by understand, although I know how that word is used in the modern legal uh, field. To understand means you stand under it. You admit that you're underneath it. You don't admit that it has authority over you. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about comprehending it. It's important for me to embrace and comprehend the world that I have created to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. I can't know everything and I don't know everything. And maybe I won't ever know everything there is to know. I don't know. I don't know whether that's a possibility or not a possibility of knowing everything. And yet at some level, I know in my soul, I do know everything. 
But my conscious mind certainly doesn't yet. My certainly, my conscious mind certainly is aware that there are gifts and abilities that I have not yet mastered. However, if I am to be in integrity to me, I have to be willing to look at those things, even those things that make me uncomfortable, which is why I allow people to challenge me. Oftentimes they challenge me on issues that I've already resolved. I've already been where they are, and they're challenging me to go backwards. Well, I can't do that. I can't deny what I've learned. I can't deny the experiences that I've had in my own personal awakening to my own personal truths and understandings, comprehensions of reality. And I do not consider this three-dimensional world to be an illusion in the respect that it's not real. It's a real teacher. It's a real teacher. And the experiences that are gathered in the third-dimensional reality are real experiences given to us as gifts to ourselves to create and awaken the wisdom that is our natural heritage so that we don't have to be afraid of anything and it's not a matter of standing against or standing for something even it's even beyond that in my thinking it's a, it's just being aware of the polarities and stopping the, the, the fight between the polarities so that we can enjoin the dance so that we can begin to get the polarities, the darkness and the light, the masculine and the feminine, the good and the evil, and I don't really believe that evil is an existence of its own, neither is darkness an existence of its own. Nevertheless, they are given to us as expressions, as something within our finite consciousness to expand the consciousness and to love. One of the people at the pod keeps writing and saying, I'm all about loving. I'm all about loving. Talking about herself. And, and she's right. I've watched a tremendous transformation there. And she knows who I'm talking about. And some others will as, as well. They've watched the dialogue take place on Facebook between her and myself. And, and it's a wonderful thing. She is a beautiful soul. I've, I've watched it. She doesn't agree with me on 9-11. And I accept that. I'm not expecting people to necessarily agree, but I am wanting people that claim to be open-minded to open their minds enough to at least look at things that challenge their point of view. I've been doing that my whole life, challenging my points of view. That's why when I, when I was the editor and publisher of Paradox Magazine, why I allowed people to totally, totally present opinions that were different than mine. Why? Because just the, ex just the exposure of people to different ideas stretches us. It's, a, it's the opposite of denial. Denial is what religion does. It wants to shrink things down and keep the, uh, keep the, uh, the context of the discussion within narrow parameters and not allow those parameters to be expanded because it makes people uncomfortable. Well, I'm here to make people uncomfortable. That's my prophetic ministry. That's my job is to make people uncomfortable, to stretch people out of their comfort zone, beyond their current boundaries, so that we can grow up and we can ascend. So I don't know who Aruna is that channeled this St. Germain message, but it doesn't resonate with me, not at all. Not at all. It's coming from a place, what I call the psychology of denial. And it's the way that we lie to ourselves. I don't have to pay attention to this because it's negative. Negativity is a teacher. How we handle the negativity is how we rise above it. If we handle it with love and with acceptance, it is what it is, and we accept it that way, we can transform ourselves within the negative structure or the negative experience. We can do that. I've done it. Do I master it? No, I, I fall back into it the same as everybody else does. But that's the path that I'm on, to embrace it all in a dance of love, a dance of acceptance.
where I can accept any truth and any thought and any idea, and I can look at it as objectively as I'm able through my subjective filters, but not eliminate it, not deny it. It's there. It's now come into my reality, to my field of vision, and it's my responsibility to look at it and choose my response. And I invite you to do the same. But you're going to live, as we all are, within the realm of our own consciousness. We all do that. We will continue to do that. I'm inviting you to expand your consciousness and allow a different perspective than you may have had before. Thank you for listening. Namaste.